I talk about malware, security vulnerabilities, and how to mitigate them a lot on here. And you know, most of the time, the mitigation techniques are pretty straightforward. They mostly boil down to not downloading dumb stuff, not clicking on sussy links and sussy emails, and keeping your system up to date. But what do we do when the malware is in the motherboard? Well, that's what we're looking at today. Cosmic Strand, a UEFI firmware rootkit that was installed on several gigabytes in ASUS motherboards, primarily in Asia. Now, although this isn't an extremely widespread malware infection that's compromising millions of devices all over the world, the fact that the malware resides in a firmware image on the motherboard makes it incredibly dangerous because firmware is one of the lowest levels of computing. In fact, the only way that you can really have a more deeply embedded malware would be to compromise the hardware directly by adding a malicious microchip to the board itself. This is easier to understand if we look at a protection ring diagram. So as you can see, Firmware is typically running at ring zero, so it has the most privileges short of physical computer chips or things like the Intel management engine. But firmware outranks every other level, and so if you change things at these higher levels, like your kernel, your drivers, and things like that, those changes probably are not going to fix a low level compromise like this. Hell, you could reinstall your entire operating system until the cows come home. You could even install your operating system onto a brand new solid state drive, but you'll still be running infected firmware on your motherboard under the hood. An antivirus can't help you either because this malware is loading long before any antivirus program is going to be able to load. Even if you're using one of the more advanced and more expensive anti-malware programs that hook into your kernel, it probably won't be able to touch something like this. So UEFI malware, it's pretty serious, but it doesn't allow you to do a whole lot to the victim's machine without pivoting into the kernel space or the operating system. The worst thing that you probably could do just by compromising UEFI is to corrupt the firmware of the motherboard and well, that would brick the user's computer, which don't get me wrong, that's a pretty big annoyance to deal with. It's also going to cost you hundreds of dollars in damages, but UEFI doesn't contain a whole lot of sensitive information. So as far as things like getting your password stolen, ransomware being installed, uh, any of those more profitable type of malicious attacks from UEFI without pivoting to a higher protection ring, that's not gonna happen because by the time your kernel starts loading, the UEFI execution would have been terminated. So of course, when I talk about pivoting to a higher protection ring into the kernel and into the operating system, that is exactly what this malware does. And it does so in a pretty sophisticated way too. So first, it modifies the pointer to the handle protocol boot service function so that every time that handle protocol function is called, the execution is redirected to attacker supplied code. This attacker supplied code is then waiting for a specific point in the boot process where the boot manager is loaded into memory but is not actually running yet, which allows the Cosmic Strand malware to modify the function of Arch PX64 transfer to 64-bit application ASM. This now modified function with that really long name is also called at a specific time when the Windows OS loader is loaded into memory but not running yet, which allows Cosmic Strand to modify that as well. From here, the malware is modifying a function from OS loader called OSL Arch Transfer to Kernel. This function is a common target for rootkits because it's called just before execution is transferred from the Windows loader to the Windows kernel. So from here, another hook is set up into the ZW create section, which this time 
copies malicious code into ntoskrnl.exe, which is the Windows kernel image. Now, Windows does have this safety feature built into it to try to prevent this modification called kernel patch protection. But the malware is able to get around this by just modifying that protection function so that it runs, but it doesn't return anything, or at least it doesn't return any red flags or that any issues are happening. So far, Cosmic Strand has managed to pivot its way all the way up from UEFI into the Windows kernel. And at this point, it waits for the user to log in. Then Cosmic Strand waits for about 10 minutes to, I guess, give everything else enough time to load up and then maybe let the user get distracted with browsing cat videos on the internet or something like that. But at that point, after sleeping for a bit, the Cosmic Strand uses the transport device interface to check if it's able to reach the internet. And if it can, it then reaches out to retrieve its final payload by sending a specifically crafted UDP packet to its command and control server, which responds by sending several packets containing chunks of 528 bytes. And each of those chunks then gets reassembled into the actual payload and mapped into kernel space. And of course, receiving all of those chunks and then reassembling them is done to obfuscate the shell code that's being downloaded. So the end result is a full compromise of the system and its kernel. The attacker can create users. In fact, that's one of the ways that you can identify if you've been compromised by this is it creates uh, these users called AAAABBBB. And if they're able to create users, then it's also safe to say that they could do things like lock your PC, steal your data, they can do anything that they want to it. And the issue cannot be remediated by simply reinstalling the operating system, or even if you change the physical hard drive, that's not gonna fix it because the pivot sequence from UEFI into the Windows kernel happens every time the system boots. So let's talk about what we actually can do to fix a problem like this, because this is some really, really persistent malware. Now, first off, it's worth noting that nobody knows for sure how the modified UEFI images are actually getting onto people's motherboards in the first place. But given the fact that well, this is a firmware exploit and that it's only affecting a small number of H81 chipset motherboards, it's believed that an evil made attack is the initial attack vector, which basically means that someone between the manufacturer and the end user is modifying the firmware on those motherboards. It could be someone in a warehouse, it could be a third party reseller, it could be a company that is assembling PCs for people. That would be my guess, since a company like that would be breaking the factory seals. I mean, they're gonna be opening up the motherboards that come from the manufacturers and they're gonna actually be handling the motherboard during the assembly process. And they're probably gonna be modifying the BIOS image by updating it to the latest version and or modifying the splash screen so that they can add their own branding to it. But I haven't been able to find enough information about the victims of this particular malware to say for sure if all of the boards came from a particular PC assembler or one particular warehouse or anything like that. But regardless of the board's source, the way to mitigate a threat like this is to simply lower the amount of trust that you put in your motherboard, especially when it isn't coming to you in a factory sealed box from the manufacturer. It's time to start treating used motherboards or motherboards in pre-built PCs like we treat our used phones or used computers. And by that, I mean resetting them. I at least hope that if you guys are getting used phones or used computers, you're resetting them, because if not, that's pretty insane. Um, but with motherboards, what we have to do is reflash the BIOS image with one that is known good, one that you downloaded from the manufacturer's website. 
and chances are your BIOS firmware in your computer is outdated anyway, so you might as well reflash it during the update process since updating your BIOS will fix known security issues and possibly make it faster. Also, I highly recommend setting a password on your BIOS. Of course, this isn't going to fix your BIOS if it's already compromised, only flashing it, reflashing it is going to be able to remove any malware that's in the firmware. So I recommend doing uh, this, adding the password in addition to flashing, because if the attack vector really is evil made, then a BIOS password is going to give you more protection moving forward because the evil made attack, it got its name from the idea that when people travel and they stay in hotel rooms, they usually leave their computers behind in their rooms while the maids are tidying up and doing what they're doing. So if there's a maid that works in the hotel you're staying at and she's a lead hacker, she might compromise your device with malicious firmware that she keeps on a flash drive hidden underneath a spray bottle or something. A BIOS password might slow her down because to bypass it, she's gonna have to get access to the jumpers on the board or the CMOS battery to clear the password, which for modern laptops means taking the whole goddamn thing apart. Now, any elite hacks are made worth her salt is also going to carry a screwdriver set with her on missions. But the longer that that compromise takes, you know, she's got to take the whole thing apart, then the higher the chance of you walking in on the cute hacker maid alone in your hotel room and catching her in the act. At that point, the mitigations are pretty straightforward. So reflash your BIOS, give it a password, never trust the maid, and you should be good. Like and comment, attack the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey and have a great day.